Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. A Steuben County man arrested after deputies say he threatened multiple people with a machete. The Steuben County Sheriff's Office says 35-year-old Ryan Harris was arrested after an alleged menacing incident in Tuscarora. Harris was also said to have been operating a car in a reckless manner. Harris faces multiple charges and was arraigned in court before being released. Elmira's mayoral candidates for the upcoming election have been announced. Current Elmira Mayor Dan Mandel will run again for his third term as the Republican nominee. This year, the Democratic challenger will be Jim Hassel, a retired Elmira College professor. Hassel unsuccessfully ran for Chemung County Legislator for the 1st District last year. This coming Monday is the deadline for any other candidates to join the race. Let's get ready to rumble as a week-long robotics camp wraps up today with a Battle of the Bots competition. Our Josh Felberg was in the ring today. iCode and Painted Post spent the week teaching young kids how to program and build robots capable of performing a number of tasks, including battling each other. On the first day, we've been watching some fun videos that have been dancing robots. And on the second day, we, we did like a maze. It was pretty hard. And we had to program a lot. And then on Wednesday, we did more programming. And then on Thursday, we did battle bots. And then today, we're also doing battle bots. So we make like a tape square, and we try to push it out of the, the other robot out of the tape square. And if we can get it out, we win one round. We used a computer and an app to put things in and then make it move. With technology continuing to advance, the iCode students develop coding skills that they can use in the future. My mom taught me how to program and build robots, but this place is different. The programming is much, I think, a little harder than the one at my school, and the robots are like more complex. I want to be a video game designer when I grow up, and my mom was like, hey, you gotta learn how to program stuff, so I basically came here to learn about robotics. After many rounds of battling, a winner was crowned to cap off this week's camp. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Painted Post. The March jobs report is out and the numbers came in slightly lower than expected. Some economists argue it's time for the Federal Reserve to pause any further interest rate hikes. Griff Jenkins has the latest from Washington. A new piece of economic data for investors and economists to chew on. For the month of March, the economy added 236,000 jobs, slightly below estimates. The unemployment rate now stands at 3.5%. I think the economy is still pretty healthy from a jobs point of view. Friday's report also found the labor participation rate ticked up. Some argue this report will give the Federal Reserve an incentive to avoid an interest rate hike next month. My greatest plea is to the Federal Reserve, please take a step back. Your handiwork, you're doing great. You have blunted this economy. We're not talking about cuts. We're not talking about a pivot, just a pause at this particular point. For more than a year, the Fed has pursued an aggressive strategy to hike rates in an effort to get inflation down to 2%. The economic uncertainty is impacting companies across the country with layoffs. Business leaders are adapting to an environment where rate hikes are forcing them to cut costs. We still have a very tight job market. Um, unemployment is remaining very low, and I really don't see that changing anytime soon. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the Fed does. Even with inflation ticking down, gas prices could be on the rise this summer after OPEC Plus announced another oil production cut. In Washington, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. Walmart announces plans to expand its EV charging network. The company says it will have its own charging network at thousands of Walmarts and Sam's Clubs by 2030. The expansion will add to the 1,300 stations currently available at more than 280 locations. Walmart says there is a store within 10 miles of about 90% of Americans, and the plan will make it easier for EV drivers to find a place to charge, especially in rural areas. Turning our attention now to Tennessee, where state Republicans expelled two Democratic lawmakers for protesting guns. The move was so unprecedented, the White House chimed in and called it shocking. Jonathan Hunt has the latest. We need action. 
What began as a rally for gun control has now cut short the careers of two state lawmakers in Tennessee. The drama unfolded a week ago when a trio of Democrats joined a gun control protest on the floor of the state house. They used a bullhorn to join with protesters following the Nashville school shooting in which six people, including three nine-year-old children, were killed. The lawmakers' actions broke House rules of decorum and Republicans used their supermajority to try to oust all of them. He and two other representatives effectively conducted a mutiny on March the 30th of 2023 in this very chamber. Justin Jones is one of the so-called Tennessee Three. He was the first to be expelled. I will stand with the people out in this rotunda every week if I have to. They can't expel our movement. Representative Justin Pearson was also expelled. A lot of them I know are upset about the anti-democratic behavior of this white supremacist-led state legislature. But Gloria Johnson survived by just one vote. Protesters swarmed the Capitol when the votes took place. Expulsion is incredibly rare. It's only happened twice since the 1800s. The fact that this vote is happening is shocking, undemocratic, and without precedent. The expelled lawmakers are eligible to run again in a special election, which has to be held to fill the now open seats. In Los Angeles, Jonathan Hunt, Fox News. In an exclusive interview with Fox News, House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall made news when he said sending Americans to fight in Taiwan is not out of the question. Alexandria Hoff has more from Washington. House lawmakers holding a press conference in Taiwan overnight with top officials as tensions escalate between Washington and Beijing. Michael McCall, the head of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, responding to new threats made by China on Thursday, saying Congress could authorize the deployment of U.S. troops in Taiwan if it's threatened by the mainland. It would certainly be uh, on the table and, and something that would be discussed by Congress uh, and with the American people. Are they prepared to do this? Is Taiwan worth it? Uh, I can argue for a lot of reasons why it is. Taiwan's president is returning home today after meeting with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in the U.S. She's scheduled to meet with the congressional delegation tomorrow. And Beijing is already retaliating, imposing sanctions against the Ronald Reagan Library and Hudson Institute and sailing warships around Taiwan. This move severely violates the One China principle and sends a seriously wrong signal to the Taiwan Independence Forces. The delegation says it wants to harden Taiwan against a potential invasion invasion by China, and Congress is now looking at ways to speed up weapons deliveries to the island, while the Biden administration calls for China to take a step back and find a diplomatic solution. We continue to urge Beijing to cease its military, diplomatic, and economic pressure against Taiwan and instead engage in meaningful diplomacy. The Speaker of Taiwan's legislature has invited Speaker McCarthy to visit Taiwan. He says those details are still being worked out. In Washington, Alexandria Hoff, Fox News. Still ahead, we have your weekend forecast. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. As we head into the weekend forecast, temperatures are a bit cooler than what we've been experiencing. Now, looking at what we experienced through much of the work week is that we had temperatures at least 10 to 25 degrees above average as we topped off at 76 even on Wednesday. And not only have we been dealing with warm temperatures here into this first week of April, but it's been much of the winter season and rolling the data all the way back to the first of the year through April 6. We actually see that the Almira average temperature, which sits at about 31.1 degrees or 35.1 degrees is at the second warmest start to the year up through this date. The other year that beats that is set about 36.4 degrees but set back in 2012 with 2020 and 1989 tied at third place just behind the current year that we are within. Now this is up through yesterday's date and we know that we have some cooler temperatures out there that might trade this temperature back a bit but we will be back to those warm conditions that we have all come accustomed to here this season. Now 
Now, the chill is going to make you want maybe some layers, especially morning hours, both for Saturday and Sunday morning. So if you have some maybe plans this weekend for the holiday or trying to enjoy some of the sunshine that will be around, the morning will want the layers. Afternoon, you could definitely see that being shed, but we see that with a slight northwesterly wind in place, temperatures are tumbling under those clear and calm skies to drop into those 20s. We see widespread temperatures for the area, at least edging towards about 23 degrees seems to be our common number. 24 there into Elmira. 23 in Wayland, Westfield around 24, Binghamton around 24 degrees for a low as well. Now we'll head into Saturday afternoon with more of that abundant sunshine. We've been working out some of that cloud cover after staying active through the middle of the week. And with that sun in place, that at least gives us a chance to see temperatures climb up towards those 50s. Throughout our Friday, we were hovering just around those 40s, edging towards those 50s once we got some of that sunshine. So as we're topping off with a high temperature just around those lower 50s, this is still a few degrees below average, but but with such a cool start to the morning, that's why we're not seeing such uh, as much warming in place as we're still also switching those winds. Once you really get a dominant southeasterly wind that's not going to be gusty, but strong enough to allow for that surface warming to continue to take hold, temperatures will be able to skyrocket. And we'll start to see that into Sunday, but as mentioned, the morning hours still with a bit of a chill. So if you have some Sunday morning plans for the holiday, note that the layers may be wanted by the morning hours, but as we head into the afternoon, that sunshine, that spring sunshine brings us into the mid 70s or mid 50s excuse me not 70s yet as that's going to be more of a seasonal like sunshine that will have in place but we will see the potential for those 70s on the board again as when we continue to keep an eye on that low outlook not much change warmer than average conditions will be in place here as we roll into the middle and maybe even end of the month now we see that in the seven day was 66 on monday 71 by tuesday and even the latter part of next work week we could have the chance to see those 80s